Wednesday boys and girls as you can see I'm getting ready for football season I'm also in boss mode right now chilling like a villain in my robe reason I'm doing that is it's Thursday morning I haven't had a chance to do a homebrew Wednesday video I've been running around with the kids I've been running around with beer stuff and I've been running around with work stuff I've just been busy like a mofo so what's been going on? I transferred over a IPA and I know, shocker, me, IPA, and a Saison to a keg. Um, they're doing great by the way. I wanted to get them in the keg and um, and I'm going to force carb them this morning so they're basically ready by the weekend. And the reason that's so important is, and as these jerseys show, football season is like seven days away. I am so excited. I had to get those beers ready because for football season, it is key that I have some good beers down here in my kegerator that I can walk right on over to, hit up, come back, and chill in my main cave with my obnoxious level of Patriots jerseys just laying all on me. <laughs> like I wish they would be filled with supermodels or cheerleaders or New England Patriot cheerleaders that look like my wife in case she's watching this video. But even if it, even though it's Thursday morning, you can't do a homebrew Wednesday without a homebrew, so cheers. Ah, uh, That's good. That is a good... This is my 2013 SJ Pour um, competition porter that I remade, and I aged it on... Um, oak chips that I uh, let set in my favorite bourbon. It's really good. Um, I'm kind of, it was an experiment to see how long I can let, uh, let a beer sit on oak chips and have it still impart flavors. And I've noticed that it, um, after a while, if you use the oak chips, um, I believe they sink to the bottom and it just seems like the bourbon taste goes away after a while. So, lesson learned. I think, uh, Going forward, I'm only going to let uh, beer sit on oak chips for about three, basically one to three months max. Try to find the happy medium. It seems like after three months, you, you lose all benefit. But that's not really the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is to talk about three key things. Two purchases, and then one, the uh, growler challenge. First purchase. This is my stainless steel thief. I was able to, I mean, look how long this thing is. It is almost, it is almost as long as my frigging arm. Well, my arm until the elbow. It's actually, yeah, that's about how long it is. So this is about, uh, I would say, 18, 20 inches, somewhere in that range. But, um, yeah, it's perfect to get, I already measured it. It's perfect to get down in the carboy. And you know me being a sanitized freak. I wanted something that I could dunk into PBW not be concerned and really get a good old cleaning. I know you can do that with the plastic stuff, but I just like stainless steel. Stainless steel to me, it's so hard to get for um, for bacteria to get into stainless steel and I just love stainless steel. I love it. So this is perfect. I got this on Amazon.com. I've been looking for one. And there's a bunch of options out there. You guys can just Amazon. Go to Amazon.com and do a stainless thief. But the reason this is important is I want to start doing some uh, sours. So this would be perfect to get in there, get a sample, but at the same time clean the hell out of it and not worry about um, using it again on other beers and possibly infecting them and becoming sours. But, you know, it'll happen. We'll see. But I'm just excited to get that. The next thing I got, this badass little pump. I have taken my uh, beers a couple times and I've had people ask me for a couple more times to um, to take my beer uh, to events, uh, either, you know, parties, uh, work gatherings, stuff like that. And I've always been like, I don't want to do it because it's a pain in the ass to carry the keg and the CO2. And then wash the CO2 because you'll have idiots like, ooh, what's this? Turning all the knobs on it. 
So I wanted something different. So I found this bad boy online um, at Northern Brewer. I haven't used it yet, and the reason for that is once you put oxygen in the beer, you got to kill it. And I don't have the liver in me yet to drink a five gallon of keg in 48 hours by myself. But another thing that this is going to be really cool with is um, I have a keg that I got for free from, I bought enough uh, stuff online and they gave me out a free keg. I think it was, I, I don't know who the company's name is, so I don't want to, I don't want to say a bad thing about a company if I don't know for sure, but the keg sucks. It uh, doesn't hold, um, doesn't hold uh, any pressure. There's leaks in numerous places, so I was like, you know what, it's going to cost more money to fix the damn thing. It was free. It's basically totaled. Like, I'm not doing it. So what I use it for instead is I fill it up with star sand um, or line cleaner, and I'll run, I'll use that basically as my, my liquid vessel to push, and then um, I'll hook up the CO2 to it, and I'll push out, I'll put like two pounds of pressure, and I'll push out um, the sani sanitizer and the line cleaner through the lines. So I already had that, it was free, I got this, um, there was like a sale, it was only like 30 bucks. So now this is going to not only work for when I'm at parties to pressurize the kegs, this will also work to basically, instead of wasting CO2 to push sanitizer and line cleaner through, I can use this bad boy. So this should be really fun. Um, I plan on doing some videos showing how to uh, how to do it. I've seen a lot of people use a um, like a homemade little um, sprayer. But from everyone I read, they say eventually the sprayer craps out and it doesn't deal well with all the pressure because it's plastic. So I believe that uh, since I'm using the keg as my um, as my liquid vessel instead of like that little cheap plastic sprayer, that it should work really well. So I plan on doing some videos on that coming up. And then the last thing, the growler challenge. I have great news. The growler is now in Illinois. It is with Nate Peacock. It went from me to Wally Fleck and, um, shit, I just sent it there. I think he's in Cincinnati. And then it went from Cincinnati over to Nate. So Nate's going to do some video footage. Um, I was talking with Nate and I've come to the conclusion that you guys should, just any videos you do with the growler, just put them up whenever you want. Put them up as a public video. Put them up in your Homebrew Wednesday video. I don't care. The only thing I ask is because I do miss things. If you do a video with the growler, just uh, shoot me a link on Facebook or um, and the name's Joe Belcher, uh, or um, or you can shoot me uh, an IM via YouTube. And um, the reason it's important is I'm just gonna do a best of growler video at the end. So. I figured no need to keep like it, to keep the video secret and private until the end. Put all the videos out you want with Growler. I don't care. It'll be fine. Just um, just put a uh, just send me an IM so I have a link to your video and I will take your guys' footage and edit it all up at the end and do a best of like uh, montage of it going from one place to the other. So that's what it is. If you guys have any questions, you know, pop it down below. But yeah, let's make the Growler challenge fun. Let's not make a bunch of rules. Just Basically, do whatever the hell you want with it. You know, treat it as a red-headed stepsister for all I care. Sorry if anyone has a red-headed stepsister. <laughs> but that's it, guys. I don't want to ramble on too long. That's what's been going on here. So, happy Homebrew Wednesday. I'm out. Can't wait to watch your guys' videos. Uh, cheers. Take it easy. I'm out. I gotta get my shirt together. I gotta go to work in a bit. So, take it easy, guys. Peace.